All right. Here's what I've done. I got my Korg opened up. And right here is where the filter is. And what I've done is I clip, put a dip clip on there, and I've got two leads. I've got uh, this is the ground for the signal, and this is the actual signal. And this is pin 19, and that's pin 1 for the ground. And what I'm doing is I'm using this Roland JX1 as a sound source. So I've got this kind of a hodgepodge uh, jack into the uh, uh, left mono output. It goes underneath this open case and it comes in right over here and it's I had it apart so I could get the uh, two clips hook leads on it and the hook leads just sit right in top of the uh, dip clip and goes right onto this pin nice and handy to uh, do a little bit of checking on the uh, modification before you actually do the modification um, so what happens is I take uh, this pot right here and turn it all the way down so I can shut the uh, the filter off because pin 19 is where the uh, not the filter but turn the uh, noise off and the noise uh, is basically there's a you voltagely control the noise from this right here uh, for the uh, filter. Because what I found out is if I tried to go into the uh, filters, uh, I mean the noise in path of the filter, and had this turn all the way down, I didn't get any uh, sound from my uh, JX1. So I uh, found that I had to turn that all the way up and then jump the pin um, from the the uh, JX1 signal all the way to 19 and bypass the uh, voltage control amp inside of the filter completely because that what I found out is actually the um, uh, voltage control for the filter for the noise source. I thought it was actually just a uh, way to turn the noise down before it goes in the filter but that's not the case. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I have uh, the JX1 hooked up so that MIDI, uh, it gets triggered by a MIDI output from the cord and it goes in and it triggers it because what needs to happen is the cord needs to uh, open up the filter by uh, uh, triggering it and anyway what I'll do, once I've got it hooked up to a little boom box here, and right now, because the keys are resting on this, it's sitting here playing constantly. Pick the keyboard up. And what I've done is I turned off uh, DCO1 and DCO2. I turned their volume all the way down. So when I hit the key here, I'm not triggering any sound actually from the cord. I'm triggering the sound from over here. And I'm trying to do this with uh, one hand <laughs> holding this uh, uh, phone and the other hand just to trigger like this. Maybe I can turn the volume up a little bit. Now, what I'll do is I got this on like 14 for the uh, speed of the uh, filter modulation. I'll turn it down. this volume control down because any anything more than well, let me turn the camera I know this will probably drive you nuts but uh, I had to turn it way down otherwise it would distort really bad so if I turn this down all the way 
I hear a little bit of the filter uh, on its own. It's background noise, but I'll turn this up. And what do I have this on? I have it on something called Thin Stack. Now I'm going to change the sound to Synth Lead. Let me change it to another sound. It's a little loud. Let me turn the uh I'm gonna turn the uh modulation up a little faster to about seven. Now let's try a string. Uh, there we go, a string. Let me turn the uh, modulation all the way up. Maybe turn it up and down. Now I'm going to put a uh, rock organ on. Play with modulation again. This is this is a sound coming out of the JX1 and going into the poly filter and then back out to my little boombox. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and turn a DCO on. Turn a DCO on. So uh, I gotta change that to uh, 17. As you can see, 17 uh, DCO1 is off. 27 DCO2 is off. Now I'm going to turn it up. 31. What, what you heard there was uh, DCO2 staying uh, um, at its pitch, and then with my elbow, I triggered the uh, JX1's uh, pitch bend like this. <laughs> And let's go ahead and turn on DCO1. So 17. And that sounded like crap, but oh well. It 
kind of gives you an idea and a proof of these DCOs were shut off. Well, um, the uh, JX1 was the only thing providing a sound source. So I'm going to shut these off again. And then I'm going to play with uh, strings. And then uh, let's put up the uh, modulation up a little faster. Uh, I'm on the wrong pat, uh, parameter. Duh. Uh, there we go. That should be the speed. And then I'm going to play with the pitch man. I've turned up a little faster. And let's play with a uh, brass. And let's do the synth lead one more time. Turn this down. And there you have it. So, this might turn out to be an interesting mod. Hush. Thank you. Anyway, like I said, this could turn out to be a very interesting mod for the uh, Hawk 1 800 uh, modification. So, modify a modification and tweak this thing uh, as much as possible. Because, uh, quite honestly, uh, the voice of the original voice of this synthesizer is lacking. Um, really, what makes up for it is that. That filter chip right there, um, and it's a nice, it's a nice filter, but uh, you know, a square wave uh, is kind of boring. Um, the JX1 over here, it makes a pretty good uh, sounding square wave. I mean saw wave, uh, and uh, I'm thinking of what to do is basically just put a a, a jack of some sort onto the case here so all I have to do is hook any, up any source into this and say uh, use a MIDI cable so I can sync the two together and uh, get all kinds of weird combinations going on um, I may even uh, take uh, the uh, noise source here and uh, extend that potentiometer out to an external potentiometer onto the board, the keyboard, so I can either keep my uh, filter on and adjust the volume externally or uh, turn it all the way down so I don't have the uh, noise source um, um, happening while I'm trying to play a sound off of a, like a JX-1 or anything else that I might have to be plugged into it. Anyway, uh, sorry for all the jittery uh, video, but hopefully that kind of 
gives you an idea of uh, the shenanigans I'm up to with my keyboard here. Thanks.